TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, don't forget we got merch. Patreon, Monday through Friday. And uh, if we go live and you miss it, this is where you can catch it. I'm confused about this. Because we got preschool. Then we got... Like, what is it? No, we got pre, pre-K. pre And then we got... Um, no, 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 no. We got daycare. Then we got preschool at three. Then we got kindergarten at like four. Five. And then first through fifth grade is elementary. Then six through eight is, uh, what is that called? Junior high. And when you graduate junior high, you're probably 12, 13. Then you go to high school for four years. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Then you can go to college if you want. And you graduate high school at 18 here. So I've always been confused. So let's check it out, man. Let's get some clarity. Welcome to Learning Gym. Today, we're going to let you know more about the UK education system. The first thing to note is that there are some differences between the education in England, Scotland and Wales, mainly in terms of breadth and depth of curriculum, awarding and regulating body. However, today I'm mainly focusing on England's education system. The first thing to note is that from the age of 5 to 16, education in the UK is compulsory. This means to 16 system. The first thing to note is that from the age of 5 to 16, education in the UK is compulsory. What do you mean by that? This means that a child must complete primary and secondary school. And from the age of 16 to 18, you must do one of three things. One, stay in full-time education like the sixth form, which I will explain later. Two, start an apprenticeship or trainee program. Or three, spend 20 hours or more a week working or volunteering while also in part-time education or training. You have to do one of these from 16 to 18? The good news. At that point, you might as well just continue to be in school because you're already used to it. 16 to 18, I'm cool. I'm just going to stay in school. Is that if you were to go to a state school, education will be free, which means that there are no fees to pay and that everything is provided for in terms of notes and stationery. However, you could choose to go to a private school, also known as independent or indie or public schools. In these schools, you will have to pay fees. There's a huge fee range for these schools. Why would I do that? when free seems good. It could be as little as 15k per year or as much as 25k or more per year, excluding uniforms and tricks. Yet another option is to homeschool or elective home education. You can contact your local council for more information about this. Let's start at the very beginning. Once you have a child, you could choose to have your child stay home or send your child to a childminder or a nursery that's crazy this is daycare for y'all three to four the moment a child is born here we can put them in daycare i'm talking about from two months old until four years old until four yeah and then it's preschool from four to five five is kindergarten for whatever reason you may have in the year that your child turned five they will be eligible for primary school in the level known as reception. Reception? They on desk duty? However, you must make application one year prior. Just remember that education is compulsory from reception onwards. This is a chart that will show you the progression of a child through his school career in England. After reception, children will move on to the infant section of primary school, which is years 1 and 2. Five to seven. Oh my God, I'm so. Five-year-olds are in kindergarten here. First grade is six. Seventh, 
second grade is seven. Then they move on to the junior section of primary school, which is year three, four, five, and six. So that's so junior junior high and and elementary school is all in one school. Just a point to note. Reception in year one is known as pre prep in private schools, while year three is known as prep in private schools. Another point to note is that various schools have got various entry points, so it is wise that before you choose which primary school you would like to send your child to, you take a moment to examine the primary school route that is best suited for your child and your circumstance. After primary school, your child would move on to secondary school. Most state schools would base their entry requirements on how far a student lives from the school. Facts, jurisdiction. However, if you would like to go to a more competitive school, like perhaps a private school or a state selective school, also known as grammar school, sometimes. The, why is this, this is one of the few things that y'all make confusing? I feel this is confusing. Everything else from the outside looking in that y'all do is very clear. But this, um... Then you've got to take an entrance exam. The entrance exam is normally known as the 11 plus exams. And this is normally taken at the beginning of year 6. Whichever route you choose to take, you have to make your application by 31st of October. So that's coming up. The results of your application will be made known on National Offer Day, which is 1st of March. We next move on to secondary school, which culminates in the GCSEs, or General Certificate of Secondary Education. This is an examination that covers a set of core subjects like English, Maths and Science. Rodney had a lot of those, and only fools and horses. As well as elective subjects that students choose, such as Humanities, Arts, PE and Languages. Generally, a student is encouraged to take exams for five subjects. After that, a student can choose the academic path or the vocational path. In the academic path, a student would enter what is known as sixth form. This is where students are geared towards the A-level examination, which will help them enter university. The examination normally comprises of three to four subjects. If a oh, this is like SATs for y'all. What show was I watching and the girl failed them and she was distraught? didn't decide to go to vocational colleges, then they can qualify in practical skills leading to BTEC or NQV in subjects such as childcare or plumbing. After that, they can start their apprenticeship or get into employment. For students who took the A-levels, they can then enter university to read one subject of interest to them. This is generally a three-year undergraduate honours programme where one gets a bachelor's degree at the end after only three years okay to which they can start their career proper now let me explain a little about the national curriculum it is basically a framework to help standardize the content across all schools which all state schools have to follow however private schools do not have to follow the national curriculum strictly the national curriculum is divided into five key stages known as KS1, KS2, KS3 and KS4. Year 1 marks a stage where assessments will be undertaken in one form or other. In Year 1, children will learn phonics and reading for English and maths. At the end of Year 1, there will be a phonics screening check which will be teacher assessed. In Year 2, in addition to teachers' assessments in English, maths and science, there will also be a national test on phonics. This will include real words and made up words to determine if a child is pronouncing the word phonetically. Did y'all really be doing all this? Phonetically. KS2 will run from year 3 to year It makes sense. Like, I don't know why I'm t t tweaking out, but like, they probably do something like this in America. We just don't realize that we just think we go on a school taking test. Six. And there will be two tests. The first one is a cognitive ability test, which will be done in year 4. This is when you find out who really stupid. KS2. That's when you find out. 
That's where you find out who taking the short yellow bus to school. My bad. This will test how well a student can think about I'm joking. tasks and solve problems using a range of different questions. The test doesn't require any prior knowledge and it's not something that you need to learn. The questions are generally similar to verbal and non-verbal questions. The results will help determine which way a child learns best, like verbally or visually. Told you. The other test will be done in year 6 and is known as a SETS. This is basically a national test as well as teachers' assessments in English and maths as well as science. We then move on to Key Stage 3, which is for year 7, 8 and 9. This is great editing. I'm in secondary school. The tests include core subjects such as English, maths and science, other subjects like languages, humanities such as literature, history, geography, religious knowledge, citizenship, computing, PE arts, DT, music are also tested. Key stage 4 is for years 10 and 11. During these stages, students will... I'm not gonna lie, if I was in the UK when I was going to school after age 16, I had to do one of those three. You would have to catch me. Catch me if you can. <laughs> Don't give me the option to not be there. But like, if it's free though, I would like, I don't know. A lot of American kids would like opt out at 16. Like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> we're working towards the GCSEs in subjects that they have chosen. Generally, one would take five GCSEs, but most students take more than that. KS5 is for the sixth form and it comprises of two levels, sometimes called the AS in the first year and A in the second year. The sixth form really focuses on the A-level examinations. This exam will determine the course that a student will be eligible for in university. Generally, students take three or four subjects. If you make the grade for university in England, you will have to choose a subject you like to study and apply for that particular course through an umbrella body called UCAS. You can put down several choices of courses and universities. The course you will undertake will be known as an undergraduate course and normally lasts three years, after which you get your bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degrees are graded first class, which is more than 70%, second class uppers or two. I like the way y'all break it down, I feel like I'm in school forever. But it actually seems like a shorter period of time than America. But it like like looking at this, it seemed like forever. Two one, which is between sixty to seventy percent, and second class lowers or two two, which is fifty to sixty percent. Then there's also the third class, and of course, if you don't make the grade, then it's a fail. After your bachelor's degree, you may choose to start your career or carry on for a master's degree, which is normally one year. And if you enjoy it, one year for the master's degree, that's. No, that's, that's normal. Academia, you can always carry on for a postdoctoral degree, which normally takes about three years. So, there you go. I hope I have given you the most comprehensive insight into the UK's education system. If you have any comments, you can leave a message below. Okay, so after watching this, I do feel slightly more confused. <laughs> But like I do understand though, like the breakdown. But like this is something I have to watch two, three times. Maybe it's because our school system here failed me. But I'm actually a genius and you wouldn't even know it. TLO leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.